In this lesson, we'll create an oil painting of a snowy owl on gessoed panel. Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson, I decided to try out a brand new surface. Now this is gessoed panel, but this panel is a little bit different than the gessoed panels that I've used in the past. Instead of being smooth like most of the gessoed panel that I've used in the past, this surface is quite coarse and textured. In fact, you can hear when I rub my fingers over the surface how coarse it is. It's very much like sandpaper. This of course will affect the brush, brush strokes that we apply to the surface and the application techniques that we use. We'll use water mixable oil paints for this painting, which will allow us all the benefits of using traditional oils, so the blending, the slow drying times, but without all the fumes, and of course with a much easier cleanup. Now one of the most wonderful things about fall and winter are the color relationships that reveal themselves in nature. Blues and oranges are especially strong during this time of the year. And this color relationship is an excellent choice when you're creating your fall and winter inspired art. And in this painting, we'll make a special attempt to pull out the blues and the oranges and exploit this complementary scheme. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin with a light contour line sketch of our subject on our gessoed panel. Then we can begin addressing the background. We'll start with a orangey mix of burnt umber and burnt sienna. This is a light application with a little bit of water mixed in. Then we can start creating some impressions of some distant trees. We'll use the same mixture, just a little bit heavier concentrated with the burnt umber. To make the value slightly darker, we can add a touch of Prussian blue to the mixture as well. For some of the highlights, we'll add a bit of titanium white mixed with a touch of yellow ochre to create just the impression of some of the light shining through. We'll also add a little bit of shadow by using our mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue. We'll continue developing these trees using this process and we're just going to give the impression of the trees in the distance. We're not going to focus too heavily on creating strong details, since in the end we want this background to appear slightly blurred. We'll progressively get darker with our applications, creating some impressions of some shadows, especially in the lower portion of the picture plane. Some of these shadowy shapes lean themselves towards a gray. To create this gray, we'll use Prussian blue and burnt umber with just a touch of titanium white. This will create quite a bit of variety in color and tone in the background. And progressively, we can begin to pull out additional highlights, again using a mixture of titanium white and yellow ochre. These highlights will exist primarily on the left side of the trees since our light source is originating from the left side of the image. We can also add some indications of leaves. This is going to help to push our combination of blue and orange in the painting. We'll allow the trees to slowly emerge from the background as we continue to add both dark and light values. As our trees start to take shape, we can apply additional applications over the top to create some more indications of some leaves. Here our mixture is created with burnt sienna and a bit of cadmium red. There's a touch of burnt umber in the mix too to make the value a little bit darker. Over the top we can create some indications of some highlights by adding a bit of titanium white. Again these highlights are added primarily on the left side of the collection of leaves. Now, with a darker mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue, we can add a few additional branches and limbs that are reaching their way through the background. Since these values are slightly darker, the contrast is increased. This makes these limbs and branches appear closer to the viewer. We'll allow the trees that we created in the background to stay a little bit lighter in value and a little bit less in contrast to make them appear more distant. We'll add a few highlights over the top of these applications before adding some indications of some snow that's resting on each of these branches. The snow may appear as though it's pure titanium white, but it's not. It's titanium white with a touch of cerulean blue mixed in to give it a little bit of a cooler appearance. The snow is collected a little bit more in the corners of the branches where they meet the trunk of the tree. 
Now we'll add some peaks of the sky showing through. Again, this is going to push our color combination of blue and orange. For this mixture, we'll use Prussian blue mixed with titanium white and a touch of cerulean blue as well. By adding these shapes of light blue, we start to define the canopy of the forest. We also can define a few branches off in the distance as well. Of course, these shapes of light blue are added primarily at the top of the picture plane. A bit of the background is visible underneath the owl as well, so we'll add a few darker values there and add a bit of variety with a bit of titanium white. Then we're ready to start addressing the body of the bird. We'll start with a light blue application. This is white mixed with Prussian blue. In areas of shadow, we can add a touch of burnt umber to the mixture to make the value slightly darker. We want the upper right hand portion of the bird to be a little bit cooler and then the left hand bottom portion of the bird to be a little bit of a warmer color and will allow a transition to happen along the wings. So we'll add a little bit more of the burnt umber to the mixture in the warmer areas and we'll allow more of the Prussian blue to be dominant in the cooler areas. This combination of warmer colors and cooler colors will help to accentuate our color combination of blue and orange even further. Now we'll go ahead and start addressing some of the details of the head. We'll start with the beak. This may appear like an application of black, but it's actually a mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber. We'll also add this mixture to the pupils of the eyes and we'll darken up the areas around the eyes as well. Then we can start adding the colors of the iris and we'll start with a mixture of yellow ochre and a touch of cadmium yellow pale hue. This color can be toned down with a little bit of burnt umber to make a slightly darker value. Then we'll add just a touch of cadmium red to the mix to add a little bit more of an orange appearance. We'll add a strong highlight by adding a touch of titanium white while the paint is still wet. Then we can go in with a stronger mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber and make the blacks a little bit stronger. Now we'll start working the areas around the eyes. We want a little bit of a warmer light coming from the left side, so we'll add just a touch of cadmium yellow pale hue to our titanium white mixture on the left side of the head. We'll add a little bit more of our mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber to create some subtle gray shadows on the right side of the head. We can allow the Prussian blue to show through and dominate in areas to make more of a cooler shadow. These brush strokes are added while the paint is still wet and then worked in with a dry brush to create a smoother transition between the tones and colors. We're also cognizant of the directional strokes that we make in this area. The directional strokes should flow along with the form of the head of the bird. In this case, this directional flow is dictated mainly by the direction that the feathers grow. We'll continue to push the cooler shadows and the warmer highlights. We can progressively make the shadows slightly darker, again by adding additional applications and then blending with a clean, dry brush. The ability to work the paint on the surface in this manner is clearly an advantage to working with oils. Although this approach can be used with acrylics, the artist must work much quicker and perhaps use some type of additive to slow down the drying time. Now we'll go back and make some of the highlights a bit stronger. We'll add a bit more of titanium white to our mixture and concentrate on adding these highlights primarily on the left side of the head. Again, brush strokes flow in the direction that the feathers grow on the head. Using a smaller brush and a bit of medium, we'll pull some of the strokes over the top of the beak. Now we're ready to start adding the pattern and design on the top of the head. For this, we'll use a mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna. We'll pay close attention to the directional strokes that we make here, ensuring that we create a pattern that is as close as accurate as possible to the photo reference. We'll allow some of the colors to mix with the titanium white applications to create a bit more variety in the tone and value. To make some of the pattern marks a little bit darker, we can add a touch of Prussian blue as well. We'll still pay close attention to the directional strokes that we make here, ensuring that they flow along the form of the head. 
a few more additional lighter values are pulled over the top of the areas of darker value, and the shadows are enhanced on the right side of the head. Now we'll turn our attention to the rest of the body of the owl. We'll add a few indications of some lighter values. There's one that's right above the wing. We'll make the shadow slightly darker underneath the wing as well, again with a mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber. We'll make the shadow underneath the left leg slightly darker and slightly warmer with a mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue. We'll continue to work these shadows until we have a nice base application in which to apply our patterns and to increase our contrast through additional applications of light and dark values. We did this to the head before applying the pattern marks and adding the details. We're taking the same approach with the body. We're developing some of the warmer tones and cooler tones, as well as the darker and lighter values, prior to developing the details over the top. We want to make sure that we have a nice modeled base in place before we start addressing the details. We'll make the highlight a little bit lighter on the left side of the body with an additional application of titanium white. We can make this highlight slightly warmer by adding a touch of cadmium yellow pale hue to the mix. As we continue to push the value relationships, we start to get an indication of the form of the bird, as well as some of the details of the wings. With our base colors in place, we can begin the process of applying the pattern over the top. Again, we'll pay special attention to the shapes to create this pattern. They don't have to be an exact copy of what we're seeing, but they do have to have a pattern that's similar to what's observed. Again, we'll use a combination of burnt sienna with burnt umber to make these patterns. To make the values slightly darker, a touch of Prussian blue is added to the mix as well. We want to ensure that these pattern marks still feel very warm, so we want to be careful that we don't add too much blue to the mix. It still should be dominated by the warmer colors. We'll patiently work our way down the wing of the bird, paying close attention to the areas of white or lighter value that exist between each one of the marks. We also want to make sure that our pattern feels natural and not too mechanical, so we'll pay close attention to the reference that we're using to ensure that we create a natural looking pattern. Now we can go back and start enhancing some of the value relationships on each one of the individual pieces of the wing by making some of the shadows darker. We'll continue to create our pattern on the body of the bird as we work our way downward. Again, to ensure that this pattern appears natural, we'll allow some variety in the tone and value to happen. We'll also allow some irregularity in the shape of each one of the marks that we make. Even still, when we're creating this pattern, the marks that we make flow over the form of the bird. This pattern actually helps to create the illusion of the form of the bird as we add the pattern. The pattern alone appears unnatural at this point, so we'll need to go back and soften up some of the edges of each one of the pattern marks with a mixture of titanium white with just a touch of burnt umber mixed in. By softening up the edges, we create a more realistic appearance. We'll also lighten up some of the highlights, especially on the part of the wing that sticks forward towards the viewer. We can also strengthen up the shadows a bit further as well. This of course creates a greater impression of the illusion of form. We'll darken up the shadows slightly underneath the wing of the bird, and we'll also make the values slightly darker on the bottom portion of the body of the bird as well. A mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue is used to add some shadows to the right leg of the bird, this time dominated with the Prussian blue. Now we can go back to the patterns on the bird and make a few of them slightly darker in areas. This will increase the contrast and make the pattern a little bit stronger. Along the right side of the body of the bird, we'll add a strong indication of some light that makes its way around the body. We'll use titanium white for this. This application will make the bird stand out a bit more from the background. We'll add a shadow with a mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue underneath the talons and a highlight with a mixture of Prussian blue and titanium white. We'll also use this mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber for the actual claws on the talon. Now we can address the mountain of snow that the owl is resting on. We'll start with a mixture of titanium white with just a touch of cadmium yellow pale hue. Then we'll go in and start defining the shadows with a bit of Prussian blue. 
there's just a touch of cerulean blue mixed in as well to give a little bit more variety to the blue. On the left side, where the shadows are slightly warmer, a bit of burnt umber is introduced in the mix. Then with a bit of titanium white, we can soften the transitions between different values and also add a few additional highlights, especially on the left side of the mountain of snow. We can make the shadows slightly darker with an additional application of Prussian blue. Using the tip of the stiff bristles of the brush, we can add additional texture. A couple of stronger shadows exist on the top of the mound of snow as well, so we'll add this with a bit of Prussian blue. We can also add additional texture to the left side of the mound of snow and do some fine tuning to the shadows just underneath the owl. Lastly, we'll add a strong indication of highlight just around the edge of the right portion of the mound of snow where light's making its way around. And now our painting of a snowy owl using water mixable oil paints is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.